Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. I'm gonna to talk a little quieter than I usually am today as I am out here in the woods. I don't think there's any deer bedded near me, but I don't wanna to make too much of a ruckus. I'm out here speed scouting for red oaks and in particular white oaks. And I'm gonna share a couple of tips and tricks on how I decipher them as I'm just kind of flying through the woods. I have a limited amount of time, just like everybody else. I wanted to get out here, film this, try out the camera gear, try out the new saddle gear, definitely get some dry runs. I might have new sticks that I'm trying out right now. And I just wanted to kind of get everything rocking and rolling. And since I'm out here predominantly focusing on this, I'm not focusing on uh, finding the red and white oak acorns as that is something that we here in Pennsylvania, and I imagine a lot of you across the country on public land are having to deal with. And particularly if you're in the big hardwoods timber like we are here in the Northeast. First things first, I'm in Pennsylvania. Like I said, we have a boatload of topography here. So I'm trying to find the trees that are in the highest elevation areas that I can handle, the deer can handle, uh, because the wind is going to be very predictable. There are a lot of big red and white oaks that are down in the creek bottoms on either side of this big ridge here, but those creek bottoms are gonna have swirling winds. The deer are gonna pick me off long before I even see them. Uh, and I, they probably won't even see me. They would just smell me from hundreds of yards away. So this is a tree I could actually see myself hunting in the early season. If I can swing you around without making too much of a ruckus. On the back side here, you see I have all this green cover here that's right up by this maple tree. Okay, this maple tree that's right over here, you see him. Then directly behind me, it's really open, but I do have this big maple that's right behind me. And then I have a pretty good canopy. I'm up pretty high. Right now I'm using four new sticks for me. Very excited about these sticks. I will share more about them in coming videos. And I'm a solid 17 or more feet off the ground to my platform height. I'd almost be willing to wager I'm almost 20 feet in the air right now, which is pretty high for me in my saddle hunting conditions. Usually I'm in that 12 to 15 foot range, but it works really well. Right behind me, or excuse me, behind you, is the red and white oaks that I was talking about. So directly out here, you can see it peeking out right there, that leaning tree, that leaning tree right through there, that is a big white oak. And then right over here through the trees, you can see the base of it right there. That is another big white oak. This tree right in front of me is a maple and I'm sprinkled in a mixture of maples right here. Now we all know that maples don't offer whitetails any sort of food. That's not gonna benefit them at all. So of course I'm here for the red and white oak acorns. Now I've hiked this piece today. Uh, the, at least the hot spots of topography anyway, with all the uh, funnels and pinch point, I'm looking for a lot of old sign, old rubs, scrays, maybe some old beds. And what I'm finding is, is that this thing is predominantly 80% hardwoods, uh, not softwoods, uh, meaning your, you know, your fir, your hemlock, your uh, cedar, that type of stuff. Uh, it's predominantly hardwoods. So we got hard rock maples. Uh, we have a lot of mixture of um, young growth, cherry, hickory, and I will talk about tree identification here in a minute but then occasionally there are these big huge red oak stands i'm talking they've got to be close to an acre in size where uh, predominantly is 80 percent red oaks and they're all basketball size or bigger and there is so much old acorn duff uh, and old acorns that weren't eaten uh, by the turkeys the deer the bear i know there's good sign up here i saw a lot of turkey scratching and as well as a lot of old deer sign it's only about the second third week of august here uh, and so we, we aren't really getting into the full growth yet. The white oaks will exponentially grow uh, August and September here in Pennsylvania. And so they'll really start dropping there that second, third week of September, first week of October. And there'll be a real big hot spot to get hopefully at least a doe on the ground in that first week of the season, which for us here in PA is the first week of October. So since I'm coming through here and I'm speed scouting and I'm seeing all these red oaks and all of these, you know, these hickories, these beech, these cherries, I'm not looking up into the canopy. I don't have time for that. What I do have time for though is looking about 15 foot and down and scanning for trees. The first thing I'm scanning for is tree diameter. I want the biggest tree diameter that I can find because predominantly those big trees are sucking up more nutrients than the smaller ones. Therefore, they have a bigger crop and they have more uh, flavorful and more beneficial in terms of the vitamins and minerals that would be in those acorns. Acorns aren't really all that healthy, uh, but whatever the deer can get, they are going to get. Also, since those trees are 30, 40, 50 years old here. This maple here is probably a solid, I would wager 25, 30 years old. 
because they've been here, it's generations of deer, turkeys, and bear know about that spot. So if the acorns start falling, it's been generations of does taking their fawns to those trees, big bucks having the same mature core area that involves those trees, and you're gonna have encounters with deer. There are more white oaks and a whole bunch of reds out of the end of this point, and on the back end of this point is that big, like that acre in size, red oak stand back there, and all those trees have just, I mean, just millions of acorns I would wager hit the dirt last October but right here these are the only two white oaks and they are relatively large in size in particular this one back here which is about a 15 yard shot he's probably about two and a half feet in diameter at his base and these uh, two over here it's a, I don't know if it's a split trunk or it was just two seedlings they're probably a solid foot and a half to two feet in diameter at their base and they are wide open we're on this ridge top they have almost no competing canopy cover I mean you can see how wide open a lot of this is it's a lot of these scrub uh, smaller canopy thinner diameter trees and so I'm guessing because there is almost no white oak litter underneath it in terms of the acorns uh, I'm guessing that when these things drop they are gone like that it's in a really easy like I said wind predictable spot there's probably bedding on both sides of these hills depending on wind direction you get the idea so I'm gonna keep an eye on these two trees this maple right here is absolutely perfect like I said I have about a 25 yard and a 15 yard shot to both of these two white oaks here great wind predictability like I said I expect deer to come from behind the camera and down over here off these two side hills on coming up to this ridge Finding these white oaks was super simple because they're on the ridge, but even more importantly, I spotted them from about 60 yards away. Identifying trees by their bark is never a foolproof or perfect idea, but if you live in the Northeast, and I'll speak for the Northeast here, uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, maybe up in Vermont, New Hampshire, and I'm assuming parts of the Midwest as well that has predominant stands of red and white oaks versus other non-fruit bearing trees, non-mass producing trees, you can identify them pretty easily by their bark for that first 15, 20 feet you don't have to sit there constantly craying your head and look up through the canopy and try to catch the right leaves. So at least up here in the northeast, the red oaks are very, very obvious. Quite often they look hard. And again, this is a well-trained eye type of idea, but I'll pan around and show you some. They look very hard on their outside. They don't look like they, they're not smooth. They're not this maple. This maple is quite a smooth bark tree, right? There's, there's almost no uh, contour to it. You just have some cracks and splits from where the tree has grown over time. Red oaks have a cross hatch pattern let's see if I can find one this guy right there this big tree right here in the background you see he almost looks like he's covered in tortoise armor and I can peek through the trees and I can see that that tree right there with that almost vertical line style tree bark that that thing is a red oak and it's a mature one at that but then I get some of these maples like this guy right here in front of me he almost looks identical He's got that hard tree bark look, but then when you start getting up, you see all these smooth patches, right? We have all this smooth, so you see that crinkle of the bark, we get all this smooth. Maples will do this, and they'll try to almost trick you in that way. They'll be very smooth, about 15, 20 foot off the ground. So they'll look like a red oak towards the base, but then as soon as you get up the tree, about 15, 20 feet, they'll smooth out, just like the tree that I'm currently sitting in. Now, white oaks on the other hand, and it is the light colored of these two trees right here on the right, White oaks, on the other hand, they look almost like a, a cedar shake uh, sing, shingle. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. White oak almost looks like they're shingled, like their bark could flake off. It's not as conformed and rough and stuck to the tree. We come down to the base, they kind of get that smoky gray color, as you can see, and their bark looks a lot flakier. Now, it's not chip bark. It doesn't look like potato chips glued to the tree, like this cherry right here next to me. You can see him, he looks like he has potato chips glued all over him, and that is definitely not. That's a that's a you know a shag bar hickory or or a cherry or something like that. This guy way over here, that is a white oak. Big smoky color, very light gray color, whereas red oaks are much more of a dark green, black, brown. Those white oaks, when they get mature like that, they'll be very shaggy, not flaky, but they'll be shaggy, and they'll be shaggy the whole way up. Maples will start out shaggy at the bottom. Uh, evergreens will start shaggy at the bottom, but they won't stay shaggy the whole way. White oaks definitely do for almost from tip to tail. So when I'm walking through big hardwoods timber like this, I'm looking for that smoke gray, shaggy, cedar shake, shingle <laughs> kind of look. And I know that's going to be a white oak. 
So again, biggest thing is first looking at diameter. I want that biggest diameter tree I can possibly find in a hardwood stand. And I'm looking for that smoky gray color. And if I end up in a whole bunch of maples, often eventually you'll kind of get an eye for what the woods in that particular spot look like. And the maples don't really want to get super huge in diameter. They'd much rather get up to a certain point and then make this massive canopy, which is what these guys right here, which are only about a basketball or smaller size, and about maybe two thirds of basketball, they are really trying to, to squirrel around and get twisted up and make a big canopy and really shade out underneath. These white oaks, they don't have a big flowering canopy, at least up here in the Northeast they don't because of our big hardwood problem, is that they just really make a straight canopy right, right up. And where we are here with these two white oaks, because they're on this ridge and we don't have as much canopy, they're able to open up, flower open more, and they're able to get more acorns on them. So sometimes I'll carry binos with me. These ones are really nice and easy because they were right on top of this logged ridge. So there's this big old, old, old two track road right down the middle and they were right on it. So I didn't need binoculars, but often I'll carry binoculars if I'm just on a scouting mission, I'm not carrying all this extra junk. And I'll take my binoculars and I'll peek down through the woods and I'm just looking for that big diameter smoky gray color. Now if I'm looking for red oaks too, I can still peek down and look for that really hard turtle shell style bark. Maybe it's got a little bit of a crosshatch to it, you know, kind of the diamond figure eight look. And if I see those, I know, oh, that's a good red oak stand. And if there's no other candy white oaks in the area, and we're going to have a good red oak year, those would also be an excellent place to set up on. Both of those that I shot last year were in red oak stands uh, in the archery season. But anyway, that's all for this quick scouting video and finding the acorns, using the topography, so on and so forth. I prefer to use Onyx for this. Uh, it gives me a good topo layer over an aerial Google Earth style image. And I'm really able to pinpoint these ridges. That's what I was doing today. I was walking this ridge here because I've seen it on on X. I came up here to this little saddle, this point down here at the end, found the white oaks back here. There's red oaks down there, red oaks on the other end, and I can play these food sources almost all year along with the topographic changes. And Onyx made that really simple, following those topo lines, walking those topo lines. And I haven't seen any human sign up here though, except for where they logged this who knows how many years ago. I haven't seen any old trails, uh, you know, little bright eyes stuck into trees. I haven't seen any trail cameras or old tree stands. So maybe I might just get left alone up here during the archery season. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions about archery or archery hunting, please do follow the links in the description below. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, send me an email, averagedeckarchery at gmail.com, or drop a comment here on YouTube. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time.